Well, hello everybody. Today's video is gonna be a bit unique because I was very fortunate to be invited to a special event that Yamaha put on celebrating 20 years of YFC 450 production. They decided to invite us down for a factory tour down in Georgia, and it was a pretty surreal experience. And I just wanted to give an extra shout out to Scott and Casey for getting me invited. Thank you guys so much. And I wanted to give a shout out to you guys because you guys watching my videos contribute to me getting opportunities like this. And I'm just super grateful. And I guess the next stop would be arriving at the plant in Georgia for the factory tour experience. We arrived at YMMC, Yamaha Motor Manufacturing Corporation in Noonan, Georgia. This facility is home to ATV, side-by-side -side golf cars, and personal watercraft production. As of January 31st, 2024, they had produced over 4,376,000 vehicles at this facility. As we walked into the south entrance, we had to pass through a security check and they had some special vehicles in the lobby. The first one I saw happened to be their three millionth vehicle, which was a 2014 Grizzly 700. Once we got checked in, they had their one millionth golf cart sitting there, as well as the one millionth ATV, which happened to be a Raptor 700 that was on display. There was also the four millionth unit, which was an R-Max next to the Raptor, but I unfortunately didn't get a good clip of that. So as we came in, we were led to a conference room where senior communications specialist Scott Newby introduced us to Bob Brown, the vice president of manufacturing at YMMC. He gave us some history and explained some of the processes at the facility before the tour started. Yeah, really, Aaliyah did all the hard work, so thanks to Aaliyah again. So, you know, it was in interesting as everybody introduced themselves last night, there's obviously a lot of passion for Yamaha in this room. So I thought we'd start with a little bit of Yamaha trivia. So let's see how much y'all know. Before we started making products with motors in them, does anybody know what Yamaha started making? What their first product was? And Yamaha employees don't count. A reed organ. So that's how this started. Reed organ. Kind of a crazy, humble beginning. Um, does anybody know what year Yamaha Motor was founded? 65. Close. 55. 1955, they founded Yamaha Motor and came out with the first motorcycle. So first motorcycle, what displacement was it? Somebody guess. Come on, this is the easy one. 125, actually. So, the first motorcycle was this YA1, and they called it the Red Dragonfly. Um, and it actually, the first year it raced at the Mount Fuji race, which was a very prestigious race, they won. So it kind of immediately got this racing cred. So really kind of interesting that right out of the bat, we started racing, um, and really we're very successful, and you all are continuing on that tradition today. Yamaha Global has over 52,000 employees, Headquarters, of course, in Japan. Our corporate mission is to be the Kondo creating company. And Kondo is this Japanese word for deep satisfaction, great excitement, and a feeling of, of great value. So that's interesting to me because it's a very emotional statement, right? But you can see, even from our corporate mission, passion is an important part of what we do. And I think you'll sense that today when you're out in the factory. There's a lot of passion there. As I mentioned last night, there's over 500 people that have been here for 10 years or more. In a production facility, that's pretty impressive. We have about 40 people who have been here since we opened 35 years ago. So here in Noonan, this is the campus. Right, right now you're sitting right here in front of Plant One. So Plant One, a little over half a million square feet. We produce ATVs, golf cars, wave runners, and then there's a lot of fabrication that you'll see. We actually produce a lot of the components that go into our products. Plant two is side-by-side -side assembly. You guys will get to see that as well. DC three is primarily sub-assembly uh, to feed to the assembly lines. We have two distribution centers that are right up the street. All of the parts that we bring in to produce all these vehicles, seven, 800 products per day, come in through those two distribution centers. They come engines and transmissions from YMC in Japan. So take you guys to produce those seven or 800 units per day. How many semi loads does it take of parts from the DCs to the back of plant one and plant two? Somebody take a wild guess. 110 semis per day. That's a lot of components. So, one of our biggest challenges here at YMMC, and you'll see it when you're on the production floor, is really that material flow. How do you get all these parts from all over the world through the distribution center, 
sequence to the line at the right time in the right place, the right part across all the products we make. It's really a challenging uh, thing that this team works very hard every day to, to realize. These are the four product lines we produce. And you see the number of models called out. Those are kind of like families. So it gives you an idea of the complexity. ATVs, golf cars, sport and utility ATVs all go down the same assembly line. Our assemblers are not out there just doing the same thing every day. We're changing from one product to the next. They may be installing a handlebar on one and a brake on the other, right? So they really have to know a lot of different jobs. They have to be very focused on what they're doing to make sure that we assemble everything in the right sequence, in the right order with the quality that we, that we promise to our customers. We'll make sure you stay safe out there, but stay close to your tour guide. Wherever possible, stay in the marked walkways. Probably the most important thing, just watch out for forklifts. We have, I think, 350 forklifts across campus. There's a lot of them moving all that material around like I was talking about. But your tour guides, uh, they'll, they'll keep you safe and look out for you. Ready to see the factory? Okay. You have safety glasses already. I think we'll split up into two groups. As we made our way out of the conference room, they had seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler's 2024 race machine on display. They also had 2023's WXC champion Jessica Elioff's YFCR on display as well. And I gotta say the yellow and blue theme on her machine is super sharp and both quads were just awesome to see in person before making our way out onto the factory floor. So as we made our way into plant one, needless to say, I was super excited and eager to see the scale of this operation. Because of all the ambient noise in the facility, we were given radio headsets so we could hear our tour guide easily throughout the tour. The guides did an awesome job explaining processes and answering all of our questions. And it would have been super cool if I could have recorded all of their dialogue, but unfortunately it was just too loud the majority of the time. As we snaked our way along through the factory, we passed by the Wave Runner production line. And I'm not gonna lie, the initial impressions of everything was a little overwhelming because there was so much to see. The amount of parts that were staged and organized was definitely impressive. They ended up having us walk quite a ways and we passed by one of the painting areas as we made our way to fiberglass production for the Wave Runners. It was really cool to see so many boat hauls and parts stacked everywhere at various stages of their production. Eventually we made our way to a huge hydraulic press that contained the fiberglass molds to produce all the jet ski hulls that were stacked everywhere. The scale of this press was super impressive as I had never seen anything like this in person before. And as we arrived, the workers were removing a fresh fiberglass body from the press and preparing the next fiberglass sheet for molding. The mass of the huge hydraulics above the press was just wild to see. This is actually just the beginning of some of the parts production that they do on site. After the fiberglass is pressed, they use a water jet machine to cut holes in it for parts installation. We were told a few decades prior to this, when they first started, they actually used to have a jig and workers would have to use drill bits and manually drill all these holes. So needless to say, the water jet was a big advancement at the time. Then, as we made our way behind the press, they have a finishing area, and when the parts come out, they aren't always 100% perfect, so in this space, they do finishing work before they prep them for paint. I did end up recording the entirety of the tour and was able to capture everything the best I could with my little GoPro, but thankfully, Yamaha's video and photo guys were on site to grab professional media of the experience, so I'll be able to add in some of their clips as we go through the tour. Before we headed to see some of the painting process, we stopped by one of the plastic injection molding machines. These big totes were filled with tiny plastic beads that are all melted and injected into molds to produce fenders and body panels. It was pretty sweet to see that they do this in-house as I actually figured that these were produced off-site, so I was surprised by that. We then made our way to the other side of the injection machine where there was an employee placing what seemed like side-by-side -side plastics on a storage rack. I didn't get a chance to ask about this fiberglass stand, but I was assuming it was maybe where the plastics cooled down. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know what that was for. So then we got to go up by the actual injection machine, and unfortunately the glass wasn't the easiest for my camera to see through, but you could see the shiny molds inside that the liquid plastics are injected into. Before we left the area, they had future molds staged, and it would have been super cool to see how they changed them out. I'm sure these are quite expensive, and it was pretty cool to see. 
As we continued our tour, we passed through the welding area where they had new golf cart frames that have been freshly welded. They do some manual welding, but each one of these metal boxes in front of us actually had its own welding robot doing various stages of the process. The amount of robot welding depended on which model was in production. And we actually got to see way more of the welding action later in the tour when we went to plant two for side-by-side -side production. We then made our way back into the painting area where prepped wave runner hulls were being loaded onto a paint line and coming off the same line, fully painted. They had a bunch of them stacked and staged for the next step in the process. Not far away they have a finishing area where they can apply different types of clear finishes on the painted plastics. It was pretty cool to see how organized everything was even though there was carts full of parts everywhere. Above us there was another stage in the paint line that had robots painting and then the parts would go through a big curing oven before they would come down an elevator where they were taken off the line and inspected. I was surprised to see that we actually got to pass through this quality control area and then you could actually see the parts coming off the line as well as seeing prepped parts being loaded right afterwards. We then made our way to the first assembly line which was for the wave runners and we walked in towards the end of the line since they had this tank here which was for leak testing. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see anything go through the tank, but it was still cool to see, and we continued to make our way through the line, but it actually had been stopped at that point for a while. After we made our way a little further, we finally got to see some assembly action. It was definitely impressive to see the speed and teamwork of everybody on the line. Of course, safety is priority number one, but accuracy was another word that I heard several times throughout the day. It's super vital that everything is done correctly, as stopping the line could cause well over 100 people to be at a standstill pretty quickly. It was also very entertaining to see all the various transport systems that they had to move models in production around. And man, once you're on the line, it was just organized chaos for lack of a better word. They did keep us moving through at a pretty good pace, but there was just so much to see and there was definitely times where I was struggling on what to try to film. We did catch a glimpse of them installing engines in the hulls and as we went around the corner of the line, they were installing the jet drives on the undersides of the jet skis. We then left that production line to head to the next one, and finally we were going to see Sport ATVs in production. There was plastic staged on racks, and in the distance you could see Raptors being assembled. We walked past a few finished models, and there was pallets of tires that were ready to be mounted. And at this point we had crossed through the end of the line, and this moment was pretty surreal, as Yamaha is the last company building sport quads, and this is the only place in the world that they're manufactured. And even though I knew I was going to be here, I still couldn't really believe I was here. It was pretty mesmerizing, and I was pretty speechless. After passing through the end of the line, we ended up by the start of the line, and there was a ton of YFCR frames, uh, utility models frames that were staged, and a cart that was full of handlebar controls. And at this point, we got to witness the beginning of a YFC 450R. And it was just surreal, and it was so cool to know that for the last 11 years, every YFC 450R had came from here, and for the last 12 years, every Raptor head came from here. And after seeing all this in person, it just made me even more grateful that Yamaha has continued to build and support sport quads, while every other manufacturer has abandoned the segment. And without Yamaha, we wouldn't have new sport ATVs. So huge shout out to them. While we made our way down the line, some of the tour guides explained how this particular production line works. It actually alternates between utility ATVs, sport quads, and golf cars, and they told us that this line is a bit more challenging to work because they switch the models throughout the day, and the workers have to know what to do with more than one model line. And the production numbers vary every day, and some machines are built for pre-allocated orders, and others are built based on demand forecasting and seasonal sales trends. And trust me, I tried to get production numbers multiple times, but they are very good about keeping that a secret. The line is also moving at a one minute pace per station. At this point, I gotta give Ray, the videographer, an extra shout out because he grabbed all these amazing clips for me to share with you guys. I didn't know to what extent we were gonna be able to film, so it was super clutch having them there gathering all this extra content. And it was very impressive seeing how efficient every worker was at their station. I happened to get this clip of this worker setting the chain slack to proper spec with this special tool. And they can just make it look so easy, but you know it takes a ton of focus because as I said earlier, and as Bob Brown said in the meeting, accuracy is extremely important to help prevent the line from having to stop. We then caught up to the transition point from Raptor 700 to YFC 450R, and there was a small gap in the units, as I'm sure they have to do a bit of prep to accommodate the changing model, 
And when they do switch, they actually have the exact number of parts needed. So when they run out, there's nothing left over as they change models. And then the next model's part spins are already staged and ready to go. And the logistics of all this is super impressive as everything that was placed everywhere was in its spot for a reason. So after passing through the bulk of the line, we approached the end again where they were installing tires and beginning a series of fit and finish tests. I learned that they actually put each unit on a dyno to make sure that the controls and transmissions are all functioning properly. And there was a series of workers that seemed to be alternating as they took each machine through this process. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the dyno action up close because it was in this little uh, room so that they have proper ventilation and everything. But by far one of my favorite things that I have been wanting to see was right around the corner. And I don't know why, but it was just so cool to see finished models getting partially disassembled for crating. The fact that I was there and got to see the only sport ATVs left in production being put into crates was a special moment for me. I know these workers probably do this every day, but they're putting the finishing touches on this whole operation that's keeping our sport alive. And at this point, we approached the very end of the line where Raptors were lining up in their crates and they were literally hot off the press. They had just been on that dyno. They're disassembled very quickly. And at that point, uh, they start stacking them all on the trucks and get them ready to head out to distribution centers. I guess that was essentially all the sport ATV production we're gonna see. <laughs> kind of in shock, it was really cool, man. And then they're loading them up. They said like a hundred and some trucks a day run between all the facilities here. We ended up going out the back of plant one and made our way across campus up to plant two, which was strictly side-by-side -side production. And I know this is a sport ATV channel, but I wasn't gonna not film the side-by-side -side portion of the tour. And the initial impressions of this plant was that it felt a bit more open and less chaotic. This building was newer and the higher ceilings probably had something to do with that and we right away ended up passing through one of the automated welding areas. As I mentioned earlier, each one of these boxes had its own robot welder doing various stages of the frame building process. For this particular model, 90% of the welding was automated, but for some other models, there's still a fair amount of manual welding that's done. And unfortunately, it was pretty quiet and seemed like everybody was on break, but we did get to see some welding action later in the Plant 2 tour. And speaking of frames, there was frames all over this area of the plant. And after passing through the sea of frames, we arrived at a painting area where the frames are pre-coated before passing through an automated paint line. We could feel the heat coming off the frames that were freshly painted passing by on the line. Once we started getting closer to the assembly line, one noticeable difference between here and plant one was these automated carts that were following a magnetic strip on the ground as well as utilizing their own sensors to follow their route to deliver whatever they were assigned for. At this point, we made our way over towards the start of the assembly line where engines and transmissions are married together and installed on the frame followed by additional internal components. And similar to the ATV line, the start was right near the end and right behind us, they were running new arm axes on the dyno ensuring all the controls and drive components were working properly. After that, they're crated up just like the ATVs and then stacked and loaded on trucks. Prior to going into the dyno, there was also a team performing additional quality checks right as the machines came off the line. And after this, we made our way up through the line, and a lot of this was pretty similar to the ATV line in Plant 1. Everything was staged and ready to go. It was just scaled up since the models are bigger and there's more parts involved. I did ask one of the tour guides if the workers moved around very often and I was told that they have a home position and they typically know the job that's in front of them and behind them so they can essentially float and help when it's needed. So after seeing the assembly line they brought us to a different area of the plant where they showed us their robotic pipe bender which was building roll cage parts and once again the amount of fabrication that's done in-house is definitely impressive to see and I'm sure this was a pretty meticulous process prior to having the robot take on the workload. And after that, we passed through the welding line again, and it was finally in action, and it was super entertaining. 
And even though the robots were doing a lot of the welding, there were still a lot of workers involved moving parts from station to station. And this was probably one of my favorite parts of the tour as I had never seen anything like this in person before. And then we finished passing through that area and pretty much ended up right back at the entrance of Plant 2. And that was the end of our tour for the day. We ended up making our way back across campus all the way through Plant 1. And at this point, this was probably the most walking I had done in a long time. So I was kind of feeling it. And the entire tour was about two hours long. And I just got to say the guides did a fantastic job explaining everything that we saw. And they answered all of our questions that they were allowed to answer, even though I was still trying to get production numbers out of people. When we arrived back at the conference room, they had it converted so that the factory riders that came on the tour were able to sit and sign autographs and do a meet and greet with the employees. I will say that we were met with countless smiling faces and waves throughout the entire tour. And just as Bob Brown said at the beginning, there's a lot of passion at this place and it was a great privilege to see the entire operation in person. And I just got to say thank you again for inviting us all down to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the YFC 450. So I hope you guys enjoyed the highlights I put together from the factory tour. As I said multiple times, I was speechless. It was so cool. Uh, I just felt very honored to be able to go and to have content to share with you guys because not a lot of people get to go and see that place. So this was super special for me and thank you to everybody again that helped make it happen. And last but not least, thank you to everybody for your continued support on our website. Thank you guys for picking up parts and merch. It helps us a ton. I know there hasn't been a lot of riding content yet, but I'm actually loading up right now to go on a super fun trip out east. I'm going to be meeting up with the brewers and a handful of other creators. So there'll be a bunch of content from this trip. So stay tuned to my Instagram because I'll be posting some stories and uh, we'll see what the weather does. Maybe we can do a little ride out midweek, but uh, just a teaser, we're gonna be at Carolina Adventure World. I am super excited. Uh, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it on this trip, but I'm gonna make it happen. And I guess uh, we'll see how the start of the season uh, takes off here. So thank you guys again. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour and we'll catch you guys soon.